well. In 1988, I named in a book called The Biggest Secret, Ted Heath, Prime Minister of Britain from 70 to 74, as not only a paedophile, but a, a child serial killer. I mean, the number of children this guy killed and sacrificed and, and, and tortured is unbelievable. Uh, a journalist, or one that passes for one on the Isle of Wight, um, rang um, Heath at the time, 98, and read the passage in the book. Never heard another thing. Why? Because it's true. I've been going on radio and uh, and and at smaller television stations around America for the last 15 years saying that Father George Bush is a serial pedophile and child killer and child torturer I've talked to so many of his his victims who've survived and many of them don't nothing nothing why because it's true and and when you've got these pedophile Satanists at these levels of society then uh, and, and and above them in the shadows that control them then you've got the power to as you pointed out earlier to shut things down to cause hassle business wise or through the police or whatever for people that are causing you trouble um, to take people out even um, uh, and uh, make sure that they're not trouble to you anymore and to to manipulate the system at will and we are sitting here what is it 60 odd million people in this country yeah. a fraction of a fraction of a tiny tiny fraction of that is controlling this country a tiny fraction of the people on this island are controlling this island and it's not the electorate it's not the voters and it's even um, uh, at the core of it not elected people it's members of this cabal and if you're listening ladies and gentlemen and it's mostly a gentleman but there are ladies involved then uh, you know you're not going to do this quietly anymore okay get used to it it's just on you you obviously feel passionate more than passionate about, I've, I've, seen, I've seen, I've uh, seen, Ian, I've seen the human debris of people, their lives devastated, their emotions devastated, often, often their bodies devastated, and decent uh, doctors, and a lot of the medical profession in this island and, and up at St. Mary's, not all of them, again, it's the pyramid, are also connected to this ring, by the way, um, and, and other areas as well that people will be very surprised about. Um, decent doctors who've seen the medical reports on these people some of them may be 23 now after a, a whole uh, childhood of abuse and they've seen their medical record and they've virtually fallen off their chair at the extent of it I've seen uh, uh, these people all over the world lives devastated uh, bodies devastated emotions and mind devastated uh, for the rest of their lives and my god yes I'm passionate about it because the, these people have got away with this for long enough enough no more they're not going to do it quietly anymore neither uh globally or locally and more and more people are coming to this and investigating this and saying my god it's true go on the internet go to davidike.com and follow some of the links through and see how wide all this this investigation is now it was a lonely road to travel years ago a road full of ridicule and abuse and dismissal and laughter not anymore not anymore because the um uh the fantastic as people perceived it and i understand why is now becoming the provably true. Is there more of uh, of you? Uh, I know that um, you know you're very vocal and and obviously you're very passionate. Is is there a, a, a people behind you? Is is, is you know? Well, you know, I, 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 in terms of my research and everything and my writing, and I work alone. I've always worked alone because when you when you're connecting dots, you, it has to go through one mind, so those mm. dots can be connected. Okay. Otherwise, someone else might have a dot in a group, and never you never hear about it. So it has to go through one mind. So I, I work alone, but people doing the sort of thing I've done, I'm doing which I mean like I say it was a very lonely lonely road years ago there has been an explosion of people now I mean we're talking about if you looked at it millions and millions worldwide who are either um, doing it publicly or doing it privately a lot of them increasingly publicly just look at the websites um, all over the internet on these subjects and um, you know you'll you'll see just how much it's exploded and and so many people now are, are coming to my books and they're coming to my talks because what i was ridiculed for your, for in the past like i said earlier is on the television news and it's in it's in the newspapers the centralization of power the orwellian state more and more control of of, of the fine detail of our lives it's all happening and it is systematic for instance there was a book written 
1932, or published in 1932, by a guy called Aldous Huxley, called Brave New World. And it was a novel, apparently. Aldous Huxley was a member of the Fabian Society, which created the present Labour Party and the, you know, corruption personified Tony Blair. And um, it's, it's a major uh, strand in this web, and therefore it knows the projected agenda that, where they want to go. And what Brave New World was about was the use of drugs to drug children. This is now an epidemic too. Oh, he's got, he's got some problem. We've got to give him a drug. Oh, he won't concentrate at school because it's so bloody boring. We, he, he's got attention deficit disorder. Give him a drug. Give him Ritalin. So that's massive. You want to see the scale of that now. But um, also in the book, he talked about the fact that the state was going to bring up children and parents were no longer going to bring up children. Indeed, in the end, all children were going to be born through artificial, what you might call test tube methods, and there wasn't going to be any procreation of that kind at all. What we're seeing is what I call the totalitarian tiptoe towards that, where you're at A and you know you're going to Z, but you know if you go to Z in one leap, people are going to look up and say, what the hell's going on, because the change is so obvious. So you go from A to B to D. You go as fast as you can, but not so fast that you alert people to actually uh, where these stepping stones are leading. What the stealing of children from loving parents on this epidemic and gathering scale is, is another major stepping stone towards this goal of the state controlling and bringing up our children and, and uh, not in state hatcheries, as uh, uh, Aldous Huxley talked about, and not um, uh, parents doing it. And incidentally, another interesting thing that connects to that, George Orwell wrote a book called 1984 in which he talked about the Orwellian fascist central dictatorship that controlled every area of, every area of our lives um, with cameras and all the rest of it. Um, his name, um, George Orwell, was really Eric Blair. And Eric Blair went to Eton College, where the royals go to, and his French teacher was a man called Aldous Huxley. Aldous Huxley introduced Eric Blair, George Orwell, to the Fabian Society, where he got his information for his novel about the Orwellian global centralized fascist dictatorship um, that he wrote about. And this is why we talk about the Orwellian state today as the police state comes in. So these people, as I've been saying for years and years and years, did not write those novels purely from imagination. They wrote them from a good idea of the projected agenda where this network of families and secret societies wanted to take the world. And that's why all the these years later, those two novels have proved so unbelievably prophetic in terms of the world that's coming in now. We're approaching 12 o'clock, and I'm, I'm no, I know that um, we're only, you're only here till 12 o'clock. People are suggesting that you stay, and uh, you I've, know, I've got it. Someone co just come over from Prague to yeah. interview me for <laughs> Prague uh, Prague program, so I've got to go and meet him. Lo lots of things. Will you come back? Oh, because come back. It's, of course, it's, I will. It's yeah. been fascinating. When I stop travelling, I will. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Good for you. And, uh, and uh, I'm, I love I'm it here. It's nice. It's, it's great. It's been very enjoyable. Well, I, I haven't really had a word, got a word in anyways, but I've tried. Well, I, you know, I've had the hands-on healing and the crystal therapy, but I've still got verbal diarrhoea and I can't shift it, you know. No, but you can tell that, you know, this is one of my questions. You, we all know you're passionate. You said you're passionate. What, what would you like to happen? People have, have got to... I've got to get off their backsides. You're saying get off your knees. Yeah. Get off your knees, UK. Well, I, my new book that came out about just a few weeks ago, and we run everything out of, out of ride, um, is called Human Race, Get Off Your Knees, The Lion Sleeps No More. And it's, it, it, it's the theme of it, although it's 355,000 words, it covers all these areas and connects all these dots. But the theme of it, the backbone of it, is human race, get off your knees, quite, on, uh, quite obviously. And, you know, like I said earlier, the tail's been wagging the dog for long enough. These pyramids of control and manipulation need our acquiescence. I'll give you, I'll give you an example. When um, someone puts a wheelie bin out on the wrong day or in the wrong place and gets fined for it by these pathetic dark suits with computer program minds that work in councils uh, and do this sort of stuff, um, if people just go... What's the world coming to? Look what they've done there. Nothing's going to change because it's one person. What if when that happens, thousands of people on the island or anywhere else all put their wheelie bins out on the wrong day, in the wrong place, week after week after week until that law is changed? They can handle one or two, 
and pick them off, divide and rule. They cannot handle us doing it en masse. They do not have the people, resources to do it. We need to stand up together, put the fault lines of political, religious, and all the other stuff, uh, irrelevant fault lines of division apart and unite on what affects us all, not least our kids and grandkids, which is freedom, basic freedoms being taken away. Because if you think the world is losing its freedom now, you just imagine the world that your kids and grandkids are going to live in. And um, it, it, we need to understand that everybody's injustice is our injustice because if we don't address someone else's injustice eventually it becomes ours becomes our knock on the door it becomes our social services coming along and saying we're taking your children away even though you're a loving family so we need to draw a line in the sand and say here and no further we're not having it we need to put pressure on social services uh, to 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 start coming clean about what they're doing uh, and we need to put pressure on these counsellors to remove their backsides from the sofa and start to put pressure on social services appointed officers and employees by the way uh, to start um, doing the decent thing by people on this island and not taking children away from loving parents there's no just problem. one thing I want to say before you go now it sounds good because I, I I've seen Bugs Life many times Classic. All right, and there's a speech obviously in it, and I'm Brilliant. pretty sure that you're au okay fait with it. And you know, it, that's like the child version of the last hour. Is that? It, would you say that was right? It's a very, very uh, relevant point you bring up, uh, Ian, because um, I've used this many times in talks over the years and stuff. It, it's a scene for people who haven't seen a bug's life. Um, there's a handful of grasshoppers who have this island called Ant Island with millions of ants totally controlled through fear so the ants spend the whole year gathering food together on the island that's all they do slaves then these grasshoppers come along and they take the food then in this scene these grasshoppers are in a tree their winter quarters as they say they've got all the food they need they don't have to go to Ant Island and get any more they've got all they need and one of the people in the grasshopper group says we don't have to go to Ant Island. We've got all the food we need. Why can't we just spend the winter and chill out and have a good time? And the leader of the grasshoppers hears this, and then he makes this speech you talk about. And he stands up, and it, words to this effect, very close to what he said. He said, last time we went there, one ant stood up to me. And one of the other grasshoppers says, yeah, boss, but it's just one ant. He says, just one ant, hey? He said, if one ant will stand up, they might all stand up. They outnumber us a hundred to one. And if ever they figure that out, there goes our way of life. We, the people of this island, this country and this world, need to figure it out. We outnumber the people controlling our lives and enslaving our choice by millions to one. And we need to figure that out, and then there goes their way of life. It's a brilliant way to finish up. David, I thank you very much for coming in, and we'll see you soon. Pleasure, Ian. Thank you very much.